Here we have Linux or Unix operators that perhaps are not familiar with the command line. We can create a menu system that can provide them with a list of selections that they should be allowed to make and not access to anything else. So both simplifying their life and also securing our system. So if we're going to write a script to do this, we're going to start off with our normal script method by specifying the interpreter that we're going to run. So here I'm just saying bin bash and then we can start giving some text to the menu. So with this we're just going to use simple echo statements, so printing out to the screen. So we can echo out and we might put a little bit of a frame around it so we're just going to echo out some lines or the equal symbol here and we can cut and paste this down and just adjust it a little bit. So you can see here that we've got some menu and you can have a menu name or something like that there and then just finish off with another set of lines. Whatever you need to make it look semi-acceptable. And now we're going to start saying well what are the choices in the menu? So we might say something like enter 1 to list currently logged on users. And of course they could enter anything they want but we've got to know what to look for so we can prompt them here. We can say 2 for the calendar and enter Q if they need to quit out of the menu. And we can see how we can deal with that in a few moments. So we've really got three options that the users can put in here. 1, 2 and Q. And then we're just going to echo out, uh, we could echo out a new empty line here. And then as we go through, we're going to enter a little prompt. Because our user, of course, has now got to be told to enter a selection. So again, we're using the echo minus E here. So we've got the slash N for a new line and slash C suppresses any extra new line. And we're going to read the result of what we type in into a variable. The variable name could anything you want. But it kind of makes sense calling it answer. So whatever we type to enter our selection, it's read into the variable answer. And of course that's what we need to be checking when we run through our case statement. So we begin then reading the selection with the case statement. So we can then go through case answer. And of course it's going to be dollar answer. And to be safe we'll put it in quotes. And we're going to specify that that then is in. And then the first thing that we're going to read is the look for the value of the answer variable being 1. And if it's 1 then we can run the command who. And we can run multiple commands if we want. So just for a demonstration we'll run who and we'll also run the command uptime. At the end of the command block that we're going to run for the selection one we put the double semicolon. And then we go through and put in our calendar command and the double semicolon. And then for our third item we're going to put then exit and again our double semicolon and then end our ESAC. So we've got our selections 1, 2 and you guys haven't picked it up yet. We've got 1, 2 and 3 and it shouldn't be 1, 2 and 3. It should be Q for quit. When I start making these typos you guys should be pointing it out as we go through. So let's quickly change the 3 through to a Q and then we'll be ready to go. Now this is okay, the menu is going to run the once, but then once I make a selection, let's say a 1 for who or 2 for calendar, we're not going to run anything else. So we need to start putting this into a looping structure and it's general that we use a while loop for this. So if we go up to the top of the script just inside the hash ping and put then while true. And then of course we need our do and done block. So the block of code that we're going to be running is essentially going to be our menu. So if I drop down to the bottom and just put in my uh, done. And then after a while, we should have done that first, but never mind, we'll put it in our do block. So we're going to do this lump of code. 
it's okay the way we've got it. We don't particularly need to indent it, but for readability, whatever's inside the do and done block should be indented, so it's easy to match the do with uh, done. And we can do this quite easily with vi. Just turning on our numbers will allow us to see the numbers, the line numbers, and then we can start setting in ranges of objects. So with set number, that's going to turn my line numbering on, and then we can see that we really need to indent from line 4 through to line 17. So again, just going out to escape and colon, then we put in line 4, comma, line, and then 18, and we're going to search for yeah, 18 for the end of case statement. We're going to search for the line beginning and then we're replacing it or inserting two additional spaces. So if we give that a go, we can see then that automatically everything have been then tabbed in or those couple of spaces. But for our case statement, we need to do the same thing. So really from line 14 through to line 17, so as we go through now, 14, 17, we need to search for lines beginning with, so just the line beginning, and put in the two spaces, and then away we go. And it's put in those extra spaces. So a simple search and replace. So let's save then the file and jump out and see how the script is working. There's still going to be a little more that we need to tidy up, but let's just have a look to see the script work at this stage. So I've already made the script executable and it is in my path statement. So we can run it so we can see the menu looks kind of OK. But we hit 1 and yeah, it certainly then does display the users and you can see the uptime following that. Our menus looping around but one of the problems that you can see is we're seeing the output and the menu on the one screen and we're getting multiple menus also if we had larger output it could scroll off the screen so it's not necessarily the best so it might appear to be working but it's not working quite as well as it should so if we go back in and edit it what we're going to do, the start of our do loop, so every time we run round the do loop, we're going to clear the current screen. So we're going to start with a fresh screen and then a newly drawn menu each time. But if we purely did that, the results that we have from our selection would be lost. We wouldn't see the results because immediately we're going to loop round again. So to prevent that, we're going to do a little echo statement, so an echo minus E. And we're just going to say enter return to continue. But if we feed this into a variable, much as we did before with the read command, then we're going to find then that we kind of get a little pause statement. So we read into the input variable. It really doesn't matter the name of the variable. But yeah, we're then just giving a little pause on the screen. So let's have a look at this. So if we jump out and save it, run the menu again, just check that it's working. So now as we start making our selection, so there's our selection one, and we've got the enter to continue. And of course, we've got a fresh menu. I can now select my calendar, enter to continue. And then, of course, one I can take back. So we get a fresh menu and we see then the output that we select. So our menu certainly seems to be working, but if we enter a control C rather than quitting the menu, you can see that there's nothing preventing us just exiting out of the menu. And if we need to force users to run the quit, then of course some users are going to find their old ways out to the command line. So let's look at how we can stop that and we can do that with a simple trap statement. So if I run through to line 2 and just insert a new line I'm going to run the command trap, so we're going to trap the signal. We're not going to run any command, so that's just empty single quotes and we just need to trap the control C at the moment, so that's signal 2. Again now jumping out and saving the file, running the menu again, and then 
if I try and do a control C you can see we're not trapping it so we're actually seeing the control C on the screen so the only way we can exit the menu is through the queue so now we need to test this to see if it works for one of our operators so we can put it into their login script we're not going to put it into the central login script because if we put it through into the central login script then it's going to affect everyone so we could do things where we could read the user's ID and based on the user's ID but as a simple test I'm just putting it into the user's login script the user will have no mechanism to be able to change the login script because they don't have access through to the command line so it's a reasonably safe way of doing it as well so as we go through then and I've got my test user Bob so if we go through into Bob's home directory so using tilde bob and then we're going to edit the dot bash rc file so depending the shell that you're using if you're using something like the corn shell then it would be the ksh the dot ksh rc file and then if we just put at the end of the file that we want to run the menu so we just type then menu.sh, save the file and then try logging in as Bob. So swapping out now then to my console and if we log in with Bob with his password, yeah this Bob's been sharing his password with me and if we move our screen a little bit over we should be able to see that we can see the uh, the menu correctly and then we can see the options 1, 2 and Q we can see that control C doesn't work so our menus working as desired but of course if we hit Q then we exit out of our script but we're not exiting out of the environment so it's taking us back through to the command prompt now then if our users did know how to do stuff at the command prompt or even if they didn't yeah, it gives them some mechanism perhaps to complain they've lost their menu muck around with things and break our system so if we execute the menu with the exec command then when we leave the menu we will also log out of the system so it affects the parent process IDs so as soon as we exit the program we exit our login shell as well so now going back having made the change we can see then our menu we can see the items in the menu are working but now when we choose Q we're not quitting to the shell we are quitting out of the shell itself and logging out of the system so quite a simple thing to build a menu the menu can be as simple or complex as you want but important things to note stopping our users doing a control C and making sure that when they exit the menu they log out as well but thank you I certainly hope you found it useful